Hello, let's have a look at what changed from Age of Empires 3, Classic, and the Definitive Edition. Let's start with the most um, popular, I'd say, or the most controversial home cities, the French. Um, I've been playing this game uh, as, um, as the beta version and now it's a streaming weekend, so I can share about the changes. I mean, I haven't seen all of the changes, but the most apparent and the most important ones. I mean, most civilizations now they have a, an unlimited satellite card, which is not very exciting. Um, setup here has changed the whole UI, but everybody wants to know how have has the cuirassiers been nerfed. So the very popular card of um, having them instantly created is now no longer it's just gonna make them cheaper like before it's no longer gonna make them train faster so cursor spam no longer possible I have not seen if they've been nerfed or not but it seems like they're the same which is fine as if you know they're coming and it's easy to counter unless you're the Chinese but the Chinese this uh, this is the biggest change that I've seen to the French and not much more Sure, there's more, but this is just a quick video about the biggest changes that were apparent to me for the short time that I've been testing it. So the next big change, I'd say, is to the Chinese. They have a. They're also very popular uh, as a overpowered civilization, especially for the Chukunu armies. And no rush, 55 or 60 games. Where, you have the, where only the war is important. Usually you have walls, so shooting from behind walls uh, was super overpowered. So now this card, where you could, uh, here, um, here, where is it? Where is it? Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. I still have to get used to this new layout, I'm used to the, the old one. So this is still the same, gives you one extra damage bonus, which is huge. You should always have this card. Oh, here, here it is. It no longer increases the attack and the damage by 100%. It's also now free, which is, it's a, it's technically uh, actually been buffed, but um, it used to be 100% for Chukunu and the pikemen now it's it's reduced to 50. also the cost is um changed a little bit but it also now includes the kashiks and the step rider the kashik is quite a huge um quite a huge boost um, because it used to be terrible against cavalry so the french is one of the only civilizations that could just wreck china even in uh Wall, walled up games so yeah these units are still powerful and there's also some changes in the army when you're in the game you can train um, I think there's a way now to train uh, Kashyyyks like the anti-cavalry cavalry archer without using wood so there's like a different setup of armies in the castle it used to be uh, one artillery unit together with the skirmishers but now you can get just some different kinds of armies so it's um, easier to have um, armies with that, uh, without running out of wood for example but yeah I've gone too much into detail of that next huge change the Russians of course can they still spam infantry last time I checked yes they can they can still spam the infantry they still have both cards but the dueling school no longer is a team card which in my opinion is a shame because for the team it was not instant so it's not the same boost and now Russia is even more of a loner civilization because it doesn't affect them their one versus one performance which is already quite good for rushing especially but um, now they don't no longer have the team bonus which is a shame but I mean, there's probably some reasons, and it's fine. 
would love to see some buffs for the streetlets though, as they're absolutely fine in normal games, but in uh, treaty games, really long treaty games especially. Like in, in open map treaty games it's fine because they're already overpowered because they have to, they can create armies everywhere instantly. But in like walled up or Rinoco type games, it's almost impossible to win with Russians if, uh, if you're not um, better than your opponent by a long shot. Or if he's also playing Russians. So that's pretty much the biggest changes because I haven't looked into the game a lot. Let's have a look at the Swedes because most of old people, old players, veterans of Age of Empires 3 are probably interested in that. I have only played one round with the Swedes. Not really a fan, but um, what's special about them, they build houses that can gather resources that is around them. So they actually collect wood from trees around them. They co collect from berry bushes. So usually people just build it around mines, what I, from what I've seen. And they have mine wagons, which can make a mine, like the Japanese with their berry bushes. Which is cool. Um, they have the, their... Um, Musketeer kind of unit, which is the only ranged unit that has a bonus against cavalry, but it's much weaker, so it doesn't have the huge attack like the uh, Musketeer does, which can, kind of makes it an all-around unit. This unit only has a bonus against uh, cavalry and has much... So against cavalry it's probably the same or even better than a regular Musketeer, but uh, against infantry it's not that good. But they have this cannon, the leather cannon, which is already available in H2, so it's quite strong from what I've seen. It's, uh, the, the artillery is really strong, there's some lots of artillery units. Oh, it's a general change, again, for all civilizations that have access to grenadiers, is this card. Most civilized, grenadier civilizations, they have this card, which uh, allows them to shoot longer. Uh, longer range. It's like a grenade launcher that they get access to. It also changes the animation and also changes the, the look of the unit, which makes it more viable. Because you've barely seen grenadiers, although if you ask me, now they're quite OP. But you know, we're gonna see how it turns out. It's not a big deal. Um, so this civilization is very interesting to play, very different. Um, yeah, and let's have a look at the Incas, which are really interesting, they only have infantry, they have the Lamas, which can do the dance, the village dance, so this is really cool in my opinion, they count as uh, 0 0.25 villagers, if they're dancing on their, I mean it's not, no longer a dance, it's now a community center, the dance is quite racist, but yeah. Now it's just a community center and you just hang around there, the villagers. Um, and but it's the same mechanic. It was a little, a little bit clunky in the previous game, they, they would get stuck or just do nothing and I'm not sure if it works or not, but you can see it's probably improved now. And uh, here you can increase their weight to 0 0.5. What that means is they now count as half a villager. So if you have, if you just make the llamas, and by default you can make llamas at the, um, at the farms, like you could make cows with other native civilizations. But the llama is, um, is probably also good to ally with the Japanese if you don't want to waste your card to make cows for your Japanese ally in the treaty game. So here you can make llamas which are, are better than sheep but slightly worse than cows. <coughs> um, yeah, so if you fill it up with llamas, you have zero population uh, disadvantage, but you still have half, basically like, you can have 25 dancers, but you can have 25 llamas with no penalty, and you get, um, yeah, it's pretty cool, pretty cool mechanic, I love that, they added that. And, their units are quite diverse. This one we already know. The Plume Spearman was already available from the Allied on the Andes. Uh, some cards are just like, what 
we already know kind of which is cool so we don't have to learn what this is we already know this is the faster inventory speed but here's a 15 percent boost and yeah their, their houses they can support 20 population i believe and they create food as a resource which is cool they're like mini factories and they still can make 100 population uh, villagers and uh this unit here is super overpowered not sure if they're gonna nerf it or not it's it inflicts splash damage so it's really strong it's like a two-handed handed swordsman or a samurai but um, it's it has an insane um, splash damage so you can wreck your opponents with that um, their only weakness probably is that their archers they cast wood so for a longer skirmish it's gonna be hard to get a, a hold of wood but I haven't figured out how this civilization works to its fullest the, they are like the Russians with their um, um, they can make the forts by default though they don't need a card and this one they can make it in, in, in stealthy so you can make them in, invisible haven't really figured out how that works but you can, there's just a button to make them invisible um, yeah so these are some special new things that we're gonna get used to they also have stronger walls walls by the way they have been nerfed for all civilizations walls they they used to have 3000 base hit points and now they have 1500 so you used to be able to have one wall which could st stall your opponent for like a minute if, if he started immediately rushing you with musketeers or something now they're not no longer um as viable which i don't know defense the defense is already really weak on Age of Empires 3, but in the later game, of course, walls are super strong and really, really important. But again, the, the wall upgrade, they start with 1500, but the wall upgrade, the regular wall upgrade to make them fortified walls, has been buffed to counteract the, the nerf of the really weak early walls. Also, the, the visibility of the walls, if you make one pillar, it no longer has a bigger range of things to see for you so you can no longer just place pillars and have them as little outposts which is fine but the visibility was not too large anyways i've never seen that used this strategy or very seldomly but um yeah it's it's a good change in my opinion the walls don't need uh, visibility the inca walls are quite strong the chinese walls actually they're now they also have been buffed the chinese walls they were absolutely useless before they had a huge they, they, you could make the chinese great wall card which used to give you 100 percent more hit points which basically is like this card but it also decreased the build speed by a lot so you couldn't build walls anymore after you sent that card and 100 percent more hit points was useless anyways and the aztecs had the, their wall dance which would increase all the hit points of the buildings this Wall dance no longer is a thing as well. Um, this will incre increase the combat strength and the hit points of all buildings except walls. So this no longer affects walls. So if you have this and this, the walls of the Incas are actually quite good, especially if it's a team card. This with the Chinese would be really cool. I'm going to play the Chinese. I, I like to build walls uh, because they're. It's a cool mechanic. You have no benefit because you, you, you waste resources, but you can stall your enemy. In a team game, having good walls is really important, especially against like noob strategies like Russian rush uh, with the Opernikis. The last time, by the way, the Operniki strategy with putting them all in one spot still worked, but I think they probably patched it out. I don't know. But uh, against in high level play, I've never seen that being used because you know, oh, your opponent's playing Russia, your opponent's playing France, and maybe they're gonna pull off this noob strategy. Of rushing you with only cavalry going into your base destroying your economy but you just put a few stables there with all the upgrades it's no longer an issue and if you have two or three walls in the early ages they cannot really have enough units to do a damage or something so in high level play it's never been an issue and um yeah so the, the incas are actually quite interesting quite strong it's just uh, just a video to have the huge 
changes that I've noticed. Like, of course, the French curacier spam was very prevalent, and you know the Russian change. So. Yeah, of course, there's many more changes, and maybe I will discover some more and make a second video. But this, as very as being very interested in the game, these are the changes that interest me the most. So for a little quick video, I hope you liked it, and have a nice one.